Now on a sneaky strategy used by some manufacturers to keep consumers buying electronics. It's called planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Have you noticed that technology these days seems to fall apart and your phone or laptop needs replacing almost every year? The screens don't last. The battery overheats or degrades very quickly. Repairing the devices by yourself is now much more challenging or even impossible. Is it because they don't know how to make high quality and durable technology anymore? Or could it be because of an evil plan to milk more money from consumers? This is the story of one of the world's biggest and most powerful scams that still affect us all. Stay tuned as we go through the dark truth about planned obsolescence. Light, the symbol of progress, invention, and permanence. In 1901, an ordinary fire station in Livermore, California, installed an extraordinary light bulb that is still burning over a century later. But behind the glow, something darker began to take shape. By the 1920s, light bulbs were lasting too long, some over 2,500 hours, some even decades. For manufacturers, this posed a problem. Durable products meant fewer sales. Four of the world's lighting giants, General Electric, Osram, Philips, and Compagnie des Lampes, met in Geneva, Switzerland in 1924. Their goal, to secretly form a cartel that would control the global light bulb market. Together, these men helped orchestrate a plan that would shape modern consumerism. They called it Phoebus. Under the guise of a standardization alliance, the Phoebus cartel imposed strict rules. Bulbs were not to exceed 1,000 hours of life. Any company that violated this rule faced financial penalties. Factories that once prided themselves on durability were now engineering failure. Designers and engineers were ordered to shorten product life cycles. A bulb that lasted 2,500 hours was now a defect, not a feature. Phoebus wasn't just a Western operation, it was global. From the US to Europe to Latin America and Asia, the cartel assigned market zones and enforced sales quotas. The cartel lasted for nearly two decades. During that time, it quietly rewrote the rules of manufacturing, not how to make the best product, but how to make the most profit. Ironically, a single light bulb hanging in a dusty California firehouse has outlived the Phoebus cartel. It has burned for over 100 years. A quiet act of rebellion against a system that chose profit over permanence. The Phoebus cartel may be gone, but the idea it lit still burns in every device designed to die. After World War II came the boom. Mass production had won the war, now it would win the peace. Factories once used for tanks and bombers now churned out fridges, radios, and cars. A new idea was taking hold. That growth wasn't just a result of prosperity, it was prosperity. But growth required something more than just need. It needed desire. So in comes industrial designer Brooke Stevens, whose way of thinking ended up shaping a whole generation. Planned obsolescence. The desire on the part of a consumer to own something a little newer, a little sooner than is necessary. Style became strategy. Suddenly, your perfectly working car looked dated. Your fridge was still cold, but no longer cool. This year's model is sleeker, smarter, and better than ever. The new models out wasn't just a phrase, it was a sales pitch, a cultural drumbeat, a countdown to your next purchase. And so began a cycle, not of innovation, but replacement. Planned obsolescence was no longer a conspiracy, it was policy. Imagine you're in a hurry and you need to print something, but when you press the button, nothing. You check the ink. Full. The printer just suddenly says locked. Many printers today have a digital chip that blocks printing once a certain page count is reached, even if there's still ink left. Or maybe it's your phone. Once fast, now slow. The battery dies by lunchtime. Is it time for an upgrade? Maybe. But did you know Apple admitted in 2017 to slowing down older iPhones supposedly to protect the battery? And millions of users believed that their phones were simply outdated. 
Same story with laptops, sleek and powerful until they're not. Memory can't be upgraded. Batteries are glued in. Instead of repairing, you're pushed to buy a new one. This isn't a mistake. It's planned obsolescence, a business model based on things falling apart. When devices are designed to fail, it's only a matter of time before people push back. One of the loudest voices is Louis Rossman, a repair technician who's taken on billion dollar tech giants from behind a workbench. He says that companies don't make these hard to fix by accident. They make them hard to fix on purpose. Others fight with information, like iFixit, a global repair community helping people fix their own phones, laptops, and appliances. And in the fields, farmers are locked out of their own machines, unable to fix what they own unless the manufacturer allows it. But change is happening. The European Union has passed laws requiring companies to make spare parts and manuals available. In the US, states like New York and California are following suit. We wouldn't have had an Apple had I not grown up in a very open technology world. This isn't just about saving money. It's about taking back control, one repair device at a time. Every year, the world generates over 50 million tons of electronic waste, most of it burned, buried, or forgotten. But it doesn't disappear. It's shipped, often illegally, to developing countries where it's dismantled by hand, poisoning land, water, and lives. And something else is eroding too. Trust. People no longer believe brands have their backs. Not when things are built to break and priced to replace. In a world where nothing lasts, we're starting to ask harder questions. What are we really buying? And what are we leaving behind? The damage goes far beyond the broken device. From cartel conspiracies in smoky boardrooms to the cracked screen in your pocket, planned obsolescence never disappeared. It just evolved. But as the planet warms and waste piles higher, the question becomes harder to ignore. Can we afford to keep throwing things away? Or will the pressure of climate, conscience, and consumers force a new era of durability? Support the right to repair. Think before you upgrade and start asking more from the companies you trust. What's the shortest lived device you've ever bought? Drop it in the comments. And if this video lit something up for you, share it, subscribe, and check out the next one.